One of the most important tools that I have in the workshop is this bench vise, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. For smaller work, I use this small swivel vise. It dates from being from the 1800s and it's gotten a lot of use over the years. Just the ability to turn the part in the vise is really useful. However, it being bolted down still limits me in how I can rotate the part. And that brings us to this video. About a year ago, I was watching a video on jeweler's clamps by Adam Savage, and one thing he showed was a jeweler's hand vise, and upon seeing it, I instantly knew that it was something that I wanted to make in the near future. Now before I started making it for real, I did a quick model on the computer just to get a basic understanding of the part and see how everything would go together. A quick model like this should only take about 10 to 20 minutes to do. And the other really useful thing about CAD is you can print out part drawings that will list all of the dimensions and that's really useful. So let's get started. I'll start off by making the handle for the clamp. I'll be making it from some Tassie oak, which is a really nice hardwood. Now this lathe obviously isn't really set up for turning wood, but I've done it before in the past. I'll just need to give it a really deep clean after I turn it. In the past, when I've done wood, I've always used a piece of steel in a quick change tool holder as a tool rest, but it was never rigid enough. This time, I'll be using a piece of high speed steel blank in the old four way tool post, and it should be a lot more rigid doing it this way. Now, since I don't do much wood turning, I don't really have any tools made for it. The best I have is this old tool that I made for the old wood lathe that I bought about a year ago before it broke. And as it turns out, that tool was a little bit small for what I wanted here, so I just started using rasps and files and it did a much better job. The end is a little bit rough, so I'll use the half centre to face off the end and clean it up. Finally, I'll give it a quick oiling using a light mineral oil. And that's the first part done. Next, I need to machine the cone part. Initially, I was going to use some 1214 steel that I use for most parts nowadays. However, I am experiencing some issues with rusting with this 1214 steel in particular. We've had a lot of rain recently and there's a lot of moisture in the air and this 1214 steel really wants to rust. Instead of having to oil or blue the part, I chose to use some 316 stainless steel. However, stainless steel is going to present some other issues for me because it can be a bit of a tough material to turn on this lathe.
I'm gonna have to use my sharp carbide inserts to turn this material. Now I was a bit optimistic at first with the feed rate and I broke one or two inserts. After breaking one or two inserts, I really scaled back the depth of cut to 0.5mm and it cut fine after that. I'll clean up the part and then flip it in the chuck. I need to cut a 20 degree taper to form the cone shape. To do this I'll have to put on the old factory cross slide and compound. Now this compound is really small and it's not rigid at all, so I'll have to be very careful with how far I push it. Now the parts are not perfect, so I'll clean it up with some 240 grit. And that looks a lot better. Next, I'll need to drill a hole through the centre of the part. I won't be able to do that on the small lathe, so I'll use the mill. I'll drill a small pilot hole, and then I'll follow it up with a much bigger one. And it's always a good idea to use cutting oil on stainless steel because it generates a fair amount of heat. Finally, I'll tap the part for M8. And that's the cone done. The next part that I'll make will be the central body that everything bolts onto. Thankfully I had some scrap steel left over from a tool holder project that was the right size for the job. Well mostly, there was a bit of material that I had to take off on the top and the front to take it down to size. For this, I'll use the 12mm rougher with the flood coolant. With this setup, I'm able to do a 5mm depth of cut in steel, which is really good for this mill, but without the flood coolant, I'd burn up the tool pretty quickly. The end mill does leave a pretty rough finish, so I'll clean it up with a fly cutter. With the first side done, I'll quickly do the other two. And that turned out really nicely. I'll stand the part up so I can cut the slot for the vice arms. I won't use the flood coolant here because it's not necessary, but I will use some spray cutting oil to keep the part cool. With the slot done, I'll drill a 6mm hole through the part, and this hole will later house a spring that will help push the vice jaws open. 
I'll next drill a hole for the threaded rod that I'll make later. This will allow me to adjust the vise. Finally, I'll drill a hole that will allow me to bolt the swing arms in place. Because I'm holding the part in the end of the vise like this, I made up another piece of metal that's the same width and I clamped it at the other end of the vise. This helps the moving jaw of the vise clamp evenly. I'll then tap those holes for M5. And finally, I'll give them a bit of a deburr. Now the plans call for the edges to be slightly rounded. This is more of an aesthetic thing than a functional thing, so I didn't need to do this, but I think it looked a lot nicer. I could do this with a file, or I could use the die filer, but I have another idea that I've wanted to do for a long time. The plan is to turn the lathe into a DIY disc sander. I could do this all from scratch, but I have been a bit pressed for time recently, so I used store-bought materials. I bought a backing pad and arbor, which is intended for attaching sanding discs to cordless drills. I also bought a hook and loop pad, which allows you to stick sanding discs to this backing pad. The standard quarter inch arbor that it comes with is a little bit small for what I want, so I'll replace it with something better suited to the lathe. I'll be recycling this turned down piece of 1214 steel that I turned down in a previous project. I'll face down the end to clean it up and I'll also face down the outside too. I'll be using the standard mounting hardware that the tool came with. The screws turned out to be quarter inch 20 and thankfully I had a quarter inch 20 tap on hand. I don't carry that many Imperial Taps, so I'm very happy that I had this size. So far so good. Looking at it, it's a pretty rough casting, and it's not intended to be run on a lathe, so there's a fair amount of wobble in the disc. And that should be a really easy fix. I'll move the tool post riser, and prepare a left-handed tool to face the part. Unfortunately though, the left hand tool really wasn't sharp enough for rubber. You want a pretty sharp tool for this type of work, and it was more tearing into the work than anything. So instead of grinding up a new tool, I just used the sharp carbide inserts that I have for the job. And thankfully they did a fantastic job here. With the part faced, it's running a lot more true, which is really nice to see. The next thing I need to do is apply the hook and loop backing. Finally, I'll need a table to rest the work on. As a bit of an interim solution, because I didn't have all that many materials on hand, is to use this piece of steel. I'll cut off this end piece of steel, because I'll need it later. I'll clean up the part on the mill, and I'll drill and counterbore a hole for a locking cap head screw. I'll be bolting it to the riser block that I made for the rear cut off tool post. It's a bit taller than the other one that I use, so it's much better suited. Before I use it, I'll cover the ways because you don't want to get grit on it. And thankfully, that seems to be working. I could probably double the RPM, because it is a bit slow right now, but right now I'm very happy with it, it's very controllable, and very easy to use. So, so far, I'm happy with it. I'll certainly be improving it at a later date, but so far, this is working really nicely. And that's the part done. 
Next, I'll make the swing arms. The stock I'll be using is a little bit oversized, so I'll have to machine it down. The next thing I'll be doing will be to shape the swing arms, and since I want them to be symmetrical, I'll glue them together with CA glue. I'll cut out the e-drawing to use as a rough guide, though the shape on them isn't all that critical. Now I used spray adhesive to glue it on, but it seems the spray adhesive was quite a few years old, and it seems to have gone past its use by date. I even left it for a few days, but it never fully dried. So I eventually removed it, and I resorted to using the blue ink and scribe method. The next bit is pretty easy. I'll be shaping it using the disc sander, so all I have to do is push the work into the disc sander until I hit the scribe line. The only real issue here is there is a lot of heat that's generated, and the fact that it is a small piece of metal means it gets hot really quickly. So it's a good idea to keep a cup of water nearby to cool the part down. Now I was going to drill these both at the same time, but the centre drill was a bit blunt and that was just too much for the glue. And that's the parts done for the moment. Next I'll make the M8 stud, and I'll be making it from some 1020 steel. I'll turn down the part to size for threading. The press fit should be enough to hold it in place, it feels really tight, but I can always put a pin through it in the future if it's necessary. The final thing left to make are the jaws, and what you choose to make the jaws from, and how you design them, really depends on what you need the tool for, because you can make them from soft brass, copper, or you can make them from hardened steel. For this project, I'll be using that other piece of steel that I cut off earlier, since it's the only material that I had on hand. Now the steel that I have is a low carbon steel, so I can't harden it unless I go through the method of getting it case hardened, but that's not something that I currently am able to do with the tools that I have, but really for this project, that's not necessary. I'll clean up all the faces on the steel, and then I'll cut it in half to create the two jaws that I need. And then I'll clean both of those up. Next, I'll stand the jaws up, 
and I'll cut a slot in them so I can attach them to the arms. To attach them together, I'll be drilling two holes through the arm and jaws, and I'll be hammering in brass pins. It's not saying that I've had too much experience in doing, so my result may be less than perfect. I'll sand off the excess, and then I'll sand down the back of the jaw to match the profile of the arm. And finally, I'll sand down the jaw. I could have milled in a V-groove, and I'll probably do that in the future, but for what I need it for at the moment, a rough surface like this suits me a lot better than a V-groove. With that done, it's time to assemble. I'll glue in the cone insert into the handle. And in this situation, CA glue will do the job perfectly. Next, I'll line up the arm and the main housing, and then I'll bolt it in using a cap head screw. Next, I'll grab a spring from this kit. It's a bit awkward to do the first time, but what I'll do is I'll pop in the spring and then I'll bolt the other arm in. Getting it aligned is pretty difficult to do. Finally, I'll screw the parts together and like that, we have our hand vise. And to be honest, I think it turned out really nicely. Of course there is room for improvement, there are one or two things that I'd like to change next time, but so far I'm really happy with it. And I really like the action. To tighten it, you twist the handle and that closes the vice jaws. Overall, I am very happy with this project and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.